Um, coming back to sort of your journey, Mark, um, you know, I was, I've been so touched by so many, you know, so first of all, you know, you're, you're both sides of the table. I've been following that since 2009, 10. Um, and I always excited, get very excited when there's a, a, a new post, especially one that is personal um, about your journey. I mean, you have, you have the best um, posts about, you know, financing, cap tables, how to pitch VCs. I mean, hands down, no one in the we world, I think, talks better and, and preaches and, and, and empathizes better than you. But for me, what really strikes me uh, and what excites me about your content is also your personal journey. Um, like, for example, um, you, you know, you had a post five years ago about how you stopped taking your mobile phone um, at night to your bedroom, which I bet 99.9% .9 of the world is struggling with um, and, and so forth. So maybe I'd love to just, why don't you summarize like your you know, some of the things that, that others can learn from, because there's so much, um, your weight loss, which, you know, I, I remember seeing you uh, three, four years ago, and now it's night and day. And, and again, you've codified the formula. So I don't need, you know, you don't, don't need to get into that, but that personal journey, that willpower, it's amazing. I, I appreciate it. Um, I will say with respect to phone, um, I was dealing with an issue that I think most people are dealing with, which is, I found myself not sleeping well. I found myself sometimes being less productive in the morning if I got sucked into my telephone. I found that not to be, I didn't wake up happy. Uh, you know, I think that a lot of couples struggle who read their phones late at night because that means you're not paying attention to your wife, husband, kids, whatever. Um, and I just decided, I think I, I go back to this issue of ADD. Uh, there's a term that you, they talk about for people of ADD. They have a problem with something called impulse control. They just can't help to do something even though they know they shouldn't do it. Um, and it, it causes you anxiety. So I'll tell you before I did the thing with the phone in my uh, room, uh, I started leaving my phone in the car. So when I would go out with my family and we'd go to have dinner, I would leave my phone in the car and there's a reason. I think this is not just ADD, this is mo most people, but it's particular to ADD, is um, I couldn't resist the temptation to look. So if it was in my pocket, I'm like, well, when could I time looking? Could I time looking when everyone's ordering? If I go to the bathroom, could I check on the way to the bathroom? Could I sneak a peek if someone's telling a boring story? Like whatever. And that both causes anxiety and it causes you to do the things where you're like kind of looking down. Everyone knows you're looking down. You're not fooling anybody. And uh, it just didn't make me happy. So I started leaving the phone in the car and here's the liberating thing. When you go have a meal and your phone isn't there, you don't have to have the anxiety that you're not gonna be able to check after the meal, but your phone isn't there, you let go. And you suddenly enjoy the people you're around and leave aside that even if you're with boring people, you feel less personal anxiety. And so I noticed that. So I said, why don't I try that at home? I've been religious about it since whenever I wrote that several years ago. And sadly, when I would travel for work is the only time I would break it because I would use the phone as my alarm. So it was sitting my, by my bed, but so happy. And then I did another big thing that changed. And I started this, I guess, about two years ago is I stopped reading the news in the morning. I'm going to read it at some point in the day. I'm going to see it on Twitter, email, watching TV, catch it on a blog, you know, listen to a podcast, be in the car, hear it on the radio. I'm going to get it at some point. But I stopped in the morning. And it certainly happened during the Trump administration where every morning you woke up to something that made you angry. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's some people who are happy. I generally was not one of those people. And I just realized there was nothing I could do about it. So what I started doing was waking up and I did one of three activities. For a long period of time, I just woke up and worked out. And I started getting on the Peloton and I found a writer named Allie Love. She's an instructor and she's all positivity. And so I would wake up with this person saying, you can do anything. You're the boss. You're here, hit it, quit it, say you did it. Good for you. Everyone else is in bed. And I'm like, it's, it sounds so crazy, but like positive talk, 
I just felt great, even if it was just someone else talking at me. And then I would get in the shower and then only then would I allow myself to check my phone. So I didn't even check my phone before I worked out. Then I started for a long period of time reading in the morning. I just decided I was gonna carve out 30 to 45 minutes. And I had a few books that I was trying to read. And I know a lot of people don't read long form anymore because they say they don't have either the time or attention span or you know, the focus for it. And I just found myself absolutely loving reading 25 to 40 pages in the morning and my brain would free up and I would drink a cup of coffee. Now I'll tell you something that I only admitted to my wife. Um, but for the last 79 days, I wake up and study French every morning. And I lived in France and I had basic French. Right there. What's that? That's a hot take right there. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I haven't told my partner at work who's French. Um, so hopefully he doesn't listen to this. But, um, but I, I will tell you that um, I just decided habits daily little small changes you can make in your life have the following consequence. One is you wake up after six months, nine months, a year, and you've made enormous progress that you didn't realize you were making just by making a small 30 minute adjustment every day. That's how I lost 65 pounds. I'm actually up to 67 pounds now. Um, I just made small changes every day. It leads to much greater personal happiness and fulfillment. You feel like you're accomplishing something over time. You feel better. And I just decided forever I wanted my French and Spanish to get better. And I always said I was going to do something about it. And I never did anything about it. And uh, 79 days ago, I said, I'm going to do something about it. And I literally do it every morning. And I have a little streak on my phone to make sure that I hold myself accountable. And I don't give myself a day off for any reason. Uh, I could choose to do 10 minutes one day or an hour and 10 the next, but every day like clockwork. And it has the following attribute, which is I wake up in the morning happy because I don't read Twitter in the morning and I don't read the news in the morning and I don't check my, I do not check my email before I study French. What I do is I wake up, I clean the kitchen every morning. I have a cup of coffee and I sit down and do 30 to 60 minutes of French. And only then will I go to my computer and check email. And this is coming from a person that has probably orders of 10 X magnitude volume of emails coming to him. Um, I can't even imagine how to. There's, there's always going to be more emails. So if you prioritize email, it's the only thing you're ever going to do. And I just have chosen not to let email take control of my life.